I just don't get vocal middies. <laughs> like Darren showed me, oh my god, Darren, Darren showed me something that was just mind-numbingly amazing and also mind-numbingly bad. It was a, a MIDI of, of Creep by Radiohead. And now we've already seen a lot of bad covers of Creep. That's like one of those songs that people just cover poorly. And there is there is one Bramon Krep. Some of you may not be familiar with that, but take my word for it. It was funny for a few months. But Darren may or may not have sent me something that was extra special bad. Uh, where is it? Okay, I don't know where it is, so never mind. You will be you will be spared. You will be spared. Maybe. Uh, hang on. Oh hell, Rick! Oh, well, give me a second. I I got I got to show you guys this. Okay, here it is. wonder if this is going to get content claimed. No, man. Radiohead totally needs the money for this. Definitely. of a vocal. It's, it's just a flute. It, it's so good. about it is it's not even that bad really the arrangement is fine it's just weird with the instruments actually the arrangement's a little fucked up listen something's weird with the drums it's just it's it's hard to pinpoint what it is about it that's so funny it could be just hearing radiohead with a flute and it could be the way the instruments sound, like when when they, when the guitars come in, bum, 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 that is just it. Just sounds so wrong. It's, it really does. Um, hey Makuni, when are when are you going to too many games? What what day? I'm going Thursday night. I cannot guarantee my availability for anyone who's going to be there Thursday night, but if um, there is a chance that there might be like a little bar meetup that night, if anyone's uh, interested. So if, tweet at me if you're in Philly uh, for too many games. Oh, it's okay. So, yeah. Well, I'll be there Thursday, so, you know. Actually, where the fuck am I going? Will there be a stream Thursday? There will be... No, tomorrow there will be no stream. Until Sunday. I think I have to go to, um... Junin.
I'm bunking with, with like, dudes. You know, so it's like... That's gonna be fun. <laughs> that's gonna be, you know... One hotel room. Like, it should be a fucking porn. One hotel room, three dudes. You know what? It shouldn't be a porn. I take that back. Bubby. Bubby, please. Go to the gold saucer place in minigame. Well, where's the next part of the story? Hurry up and get in. Did I just bribe a guard? That doesn't seem wholesome. God, remember this music? Nope, I'm out. Shinra's collected huge materia at the Junin undersea reactor. When they're all done, they'll bring it to this airport. Get out of here before you get in the way. But me? I'm gonna be watching it from here. So I don't get in their way either. My favorite episode of Rick and Morty. Um, I, I mentioned this, I have a few episodes that I really like. The first one being Mr. Meeseeks, of course. That's, I think, one of the... That's the first one I saw. And I also really like the Infinite Television episode. A lot. And I also really like the uh, Cronenberg episode with the, uh... The Mantis things. And the weird fucked up creatures. Like, because of the pheromones? I love that episode. Thank you, Pizza Dick. I may be mistaken, but doesn't it feel like we're missing something? What are we missing? down, not me. Weapon Meteor, even bad customers. Oh, wait, did they move the gun yet? New Age. Rufus, President of Shinra. Let's see how hard you trained. Attention! Charge! <laughs> That's the underwater reactor. Come back. I still have the yeasty, salty taste of Vegemite in my mouth right now. And uh, I, this is an experience I, I do not wish to uh, replicate or duplicate at any point in my life ever. 100 needles is, is an enemy skill. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Yeah, the two brothers part. 
of uh, the Infinite Television episode was it was incredible because it was all improv. Wait, what? Someone just asked, would I recommend Vegemite to my viewers? Well, I've described it as Satan's asshole. Um, so no, I probably wouldn't, to be totally honest. It's no, it's just, I had it on its own. Like, I tried it on toast, it wasn't that bad. A thin layer on toast was more or less acceptable. But then you try it on its own, and it's like, you know, that's definitely not what you're supposed to do at all, ever, ever, ever. Where, where was there, a, oh, there was an elevator? Is this, is this an elevator? Does this count as an elevator? Oh wait, no, this is going up, not down. Fuck. The one on the wall was a door. Fuck. Okay. It's amazing how much relevance this stream. Oh, god damn it. This stream gained. Like, I remember people were upset, and a lot of people were like, oh, god damn it, why are you playing Final Fantasy VII? I was like, I don't even know. Something compelled me, Patterson compelled, to play Final Fantasy VII. And uh, then halfway through my playthrough, it was like, oh, Square's gonna go ahead and announce a, a remake. And then suddenly now everyone's like, oh shit. What's this game all about? Why, why, why are they remaking this crap? There's a big one on the- oh, that's a fucking- wow, okay. Alright, I missed that completely. How about whoever stays alive gets to take her out? Alright, you're on. But what if both of us? Well, I don't even talk about that. Hyper my my dudes. So I learned something today from a Beatles book. It's that um, you, when John Lennon wrote the song "I Am the Walrus," you know the lyrics, "I am the Eggman, they are the Eggmen." That line, or those lines, I should say. Yeah. So you know. Um, I found out today that Eggman was what they called, that's, that's armor, Eric Burden from The Animals, he's the singer of the band called The Animals, used to do this thing, they used to have these wild sex parties, and Eric Burden, oh, Cloud doesn't have a fucking accessory. Ah. Uh, Cloud needs a ribbon. Alright, we'll give him, um... Going to the underwater reactor, so. So, Eric Burden used to have these wild sex parties, and John Lennon, like, joined him a few times, and he used to crack eggs over, like, girls' naked bodies. And so, John Lennon called him the Eggman. So, yo, Eggman! There's a good chance that Sega named Dr. Robotnik Eggman based on the Beatles song. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. If that's true, if that is the case, then it's in relation to wild 60s orgies where someone would break eggs over, like, naked women. So there you go. But the walrus was Paul. 
Um, what was I doing here? There was uh, Shinra Beta. I want to see what that is. That's crap. There went two perfectly good men. Okay, back to work. Back to work. Oh, and I'm sleepy. For Jenin. Oh, I forgot to use Hyper. Um, I'm actually going to get the book. I want to read this. Uh, I don't want to misquote the author of this book because I, I, that, that could ruin the story. I actually want to see exactly what this Eggman business is all about. Yeah! Eggman! While my guitar gently weeps, the White Album. Maybe you're a rich man, all you need is love. Uh, I am the walrus, here it is. I only recently heard of a possible explanation for the Eggman. Eric Burden, leader of the animals, with whom John had shared a few wild parties, supposedly enjoyed breaking an egg on the naked body of a girl. That is the quote from the book. That is the quote <laughs> directly from this author. So, there you go. You learn something new every fucking day. Eggman, get the shit. Shit. I don't- I don't really get that, to be honest. I don't really understand the- the concept of what Eric Burden was doing. Like, how in any way, shape, or form does breaking an egg over a naked woman improve what is already something I think is amazing? How is there an improvement that suddenly she's now covered in raw, yolky, shitty egg? That's not an improvement. That, that doesn't make any sense to me. I'm sure, look, I get it. Fetishes are weird. I, some people got some strange ones. But, like, here's a singer of a big rock and roll band. You'd think maybe there'd be a little something other than just breaking an egg. Ah, I don't know. It's just... I mean, what if, like, okay, I've heard about, like, eating off a naked body, right? That, that one's pretty common. So what if he made scrambled eggs and then put it on the naked woman and then they ate like scrambled eggs breakfasts off each other that sounds a little bit more plausible than a, a gross egg because then it's like raw egg tastes like raw egg <laughs> it's not a pleasurable or desirable thing so I don't, I don't know I don't know why I'm analyzing this this is weird I am the egg man they are the Eggmen. I am the Walrus. So, there's a, a fucking hotel in the Bahamas called the Atlantis. And there's actually a, an underwater tunnel like this there. And it, it's surreal. And, and amazing. Oh, shit. Doesn't this fucker have something good? Ghost ship? It's got like St. Elmo's fire or something. There's like a weird move on this this guy. Morph into guidebook. You need to transform him into an item. I don't have morph on right now. 
I do not have morph. I have to kill him first and then and then morph him. What does the guidebook do? Wow, how the fuck did I remember that this guy used a, an attack called St. Elmo's Fire? That's weird. Oh, Cloud is healing him. I'm not even paying attention. Whoops. Treated for the underwater materia. Oh, right, to defeat the weapon eventually, right? <sighs> Why is there a skeleton sailing a boat in a tunnel underwater? What do you mean, Mr. Katz? What do you mean? Why is that weird? Uh, Darren, what does Bob Bob Levy do on stage with blue cheese? How does one morph effectively in this game? Do you have to, like, get their, their health down? <laughs> Look at this skeleton. Morph has to be the last hit. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know how much HP this fucker has, so I'll just keep attacking and hoping that the last hit is coming. Well, that does almost no damage. I think what I need to do here is, is find out how much HP this thing has. I don't have the scan materia on. Oh, Sid, don't kill it with 9-11. How dare you, Sid. You gotta let Barrett morph. I'm thinking it's got to be almost dead. We, we hit it a bunch. Fuck this. God damn it! It dummy doesn't work on him. Nor does laser. He's a resilient skeleton. Here's a different enemy. What the hell enemy is this? We gotta, we're gonna morph. We're gonna morph the ghosts. The ghost ship. Alright, here we go. So, we have to get him down a little bit first. But, fire three should do the trick. Ah, I used the all fire three. That was a mistake. So he's got six, six, 
6,600. So... Probably getting kind of close now. So I could do another sit attack. No ah fuck Sid. Please. No, no, I got this now. I got this. with added effect on your weapon. That's actually not a terrible idea. Alright, now there's another new enemy. Corvette. Alright. Okay, I'll, I'll fix this. I really don't plan on grinding too much in this game, but uh, this is one of those cases, I guess. added effect with cloud. So I'm going to take Odin off cloud. I'm going to take morph. I'm just going to take counter attack off Sid. I'm going to take morph off Barret. And give morph to cloud. And that'll be, that'll be it. Get some loco weed from the vets. They have loco weed. Um, I don't think I want to fight Ruby uh, weapon, but I'll probably end up fighting Emerald. Right, so first things first, we need to do the limit break. So if I just attack with Cloud, more full work, right? Just healed. <laughs> Fucking shit, mate! Oh, it's fucking garbage, all of it is fucking complete fucking shite. God, this is why is this so hard? It's a, it, it, they're, they're in on it. Both Barrett and Sid, they know what I'm trying to do. 
And they're trying their fucking hardest to prevent it from happening. This time we got it. This time we got it. Just, just cloud attacks from here on out. That's it. Just cloud. Just cloud. We don't have counterattack on. There's no way they could fuck this up now. <laughs> I thought added effect plus morph morphed enemies. Why didn't he morph? Added effect morph doesn't morph. That is funny because I was told it did morph. In fact, did I almost kill him? I may have just almost killed him. That might be, you know what? He might be almost dead. He's got a little bit left. All right, so we can we can start morphing him now. It's gonna take some time. Sid needs to not crit. If Sid crits, I'm going to remove Sid from my team permanently. All right, Sid. Good job, buddy. Good job. Now we're in business. Go on, I. What are you doing? No, leave him alone. Barrett's dead. He just killed Barrett. Guidebook. <laughs> Sweet fucking Jesus, finally. One weakness, oars. I'll click it, chick. Just, just uh, link it, and I'll, I'll press the button. Or I'll press the link. So the guidebook can be traded for underwater materia, which allows you to breathe underwater, which allows you to fight a specific enemy. Alright, so this is, uh... I'll take a look at this later. This is good stuff. Um, I read an article that someone linked me to last night about how Genova is the real enemy of, uh, of Final Fantasy VII. And in fact, Sephiroth... When Sephiroth died, Sephiroth stayed dead. And Genova actually broke out of the cell in Midgar. It's a really, really interesting theory about Genova broke itself out of its cell and freed Cloud. 
and killed guards and, and you know, was the initiate of this reunion and used Sephiroth's will and Sephiroth's image to uh, get things done. It's cannon. That's cannon. So it was Genova's will all along, and that Sephiroth, having been dead for five years at the hands of Cloud, was actually the real puppet. It's the other way around? What, so Sephiroth manipulated Genova? That's not what I read. Crisis Core. What was in Crisis Core? I don't remember. We know Genova's a, sh a shapeshifter. Genova was Sephiroth puppet, but Genova came first. I think this theory was established before Crisis Core and everything. Sephiroth wasn't in Midgar, but manipulated Genova with his consciousness. Well, how about this? How about I just link you guys to the article? You can read it, and you can determine whether or not you like it. I don't know what's canon. I don't know what happened after Final Fantasy VII. I don't remember Crisis Core very much. It's, uh, it's a long fucking read, too. And there's a lot of evidence. Here, look. I linked it in the chat, like, seven times. I'm gonna get banned from my own chat room for linking it so many times, but there it is. It is linked, and, uh, if you want to take a look at it, it's- it's right there. I- I- I read it. I thought it was interesting. Maybe not true, but interesting at the very least. Um, alright, so listen, guys, I- I have to- It's late. And I gotta- I gotta cut the stream here at this- Cliffhanger, sadly. So we're in the underwater reactor. And we spent ten minutes trying to kill a skeleton on a wooden boat inside an underwater cave. Underwater glass tunnel, excuse me. And we- we turned him with our sword into a book. We used a sword to turn a skeleton on a wooden boat in an underwater glass tunnel into a book. I understand that Sephiroth had a strong enough will to influence Genova, but this theory, which I'm, I'm not saying I believe it, I'm not saying that I specifically, I specifically think it's, it's uh, the best theory I've ever read. I'm not even sure if anything was retconned or, or, or changed or talked about or, or expanded upon in the extended Final Fantasy VII stuff. But, I read most of that article. I, you know, I skimmed through some of it, but I read most of it in good detail. And I thought it was really interesting. And, um, you know, if it's wrong, it's wrong. That's fine. But I just think that there is something to the idea that Genova itself was was actually the real villain. And, I mean, we know Genova was the real villain in, in the sense that it influenced all the evil shit that happened. And without Genova, there would be no Sephiroth. But... The theory proposes that Genova was actually the thing controlling Sephiroth all along, you know, after his death. And even during, like, I'll give you an example. Last night we witnessed something interesting in the game, and I want to propose this for a second before I check the art. This theory proposes that Sephiroth's madness, when um, you hit the flashback and Cloud goes to visit Sephiroth, where Sephiroth talks about, how he is descended from the ancients, and, and there was a group of ancients that wandered around because they were invested in this journey, and then a separate group of lazy ancients would settle, and they became Cloud's ancestors, and because they were shitty ancients, they didn't do anything, they were lazy fucks, they just wanted to sit around and reap the benefits 
of the planet and the other ancients. They didn't go on the journey. He talks about that, and that's never really mentioned again from what I read last night, or maybe I'm wrong. I don't even know. But um, so he comes up with these insane theories and, and, and shit, and then he talks about, you know, not long after that, the closer he gets to Genova, he starts talking about, like, how she is the one true ruler of this planet because it's her birthright, you know, and it's like he went from um, everyone that's human is lazy because they, they fucked up and they didn't do the right thing. Their ancestors were lazy assholes and they were they were bad to and when he got closer to her and he started twitching and getting crazy. He started he then went to like this megalomaniac shit of him being the chosen one and the ruler of the planet. So the theory suggests, and again, I found it interesting, which, you know, you may not. Um, the theory suggests that the closer that Sephiroth got to Genova, the more Genova's will influenced him, because he seemed fairly level-headed up until he got to Shinra Mansion and got really close to Genova at the reactor, and uh, instead of keeping his cool, he started spouting crazy shit. So that's some. I, I thought I thought that was a good piece of evidence for this theory being potentially true in relation to the closer he gets to this thing, the more madness, you know, it, it exerts his will over him and and let uh, it allowed Sephiroth to do its dirty work. Genova, that is, Genova allowed Sephiroth to do his her dirty work because Sephiroth, Bob, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Final Fantasy VII doesn't make any sense. Convoluted. All right. Let's check out the art, and then I can not think about Final Fantasy VII for a long time. Someone in chat just said it was more of a partnership than a mastery, which I find an interesting statement. And someone else said perhaps the remake will weigh in on this, which I find equally interesting. I hope so. I hope the people that are doing the remake actually understand what the hell's going on and are able to fully expand upon this the story, which could use a little bit of work, in my opinion, in, in terms of, you know, obviously translation, but also in terms of clarity. I feel like a lot of clarity is is definitely lost. A lot of the, the more subtle kind of bits of the story are lost on, on people because it's just, just so much. 